Brought to you by wikivd.com Aileen Warnos Aileen Carol Warnos Prowl was an American serial killer who murdered seven men in Florida between 1989 and 1990 by shooting them at point-blank range. Warnos claimed that her victims had either raped or attempted to rape her while she was working as a sex worker, and that all of the homicides were committed in self-defense. She was convicted and sentenced to death for six of the murders and was executed by lethal injection on October 9, 2002. Childhood Aileen Warnos was born Aileen Carol Pittman in Rochester, Michigan on February 29, 1956. Her Finnish-American mother Diane Warnos was 14 years old when she married Aileen's father, Leo Dale Pittman on June 3, 1954, less than two years later and two months before Aileen was born. Diane filed for divorce. Eileen's older brother Keith was born on March 14, 1955. Warnos never met her father, he was incarcerated at the time of her birth. Leo Dale Pittman was diagnosed with schizophrenia later convicted of sex crimes against children, and eventually hanged himself in prison on January 30, 1969. In January 1960, when Warnos was almost four years old Diane abandoned her children leaving them with the maternal grandparents Lori and Britta Warnos who legally adopted Keith and Aileen on March 18, 1960. By the age of 11, Warnos began engaging in sexual activities in school in exchange for cigarettes, drugs and food. She had also engaged in sexual activities with her brother. Warnos said that her alcoholic grandfather had sexually assaulted and beaten her when she was a child. Before beating her he would force her to strip out of her clothes. In 1970, at age 14 she became pregnant having been raped by an accomplice of her grandfather. Warnos gave birth to a boy at a home for unwed mothers on March 23, 1971 and the child was placed for adoption. A few months after her baby was born she dropped out of school at about the same time that her grandmother died of liver failure. When Warnos was 15, her grandfather threw her out of the house and she began supporting herself as a sex worker and living in the woods near her old home. Early criminal activity On May 27, 1974 at age 18 Warnos was arrested in Jefferson County, Colorado for driving under the influence disorderly conduct and firing a .22 caliber pistol from a moving vehicle. She was later charged with failure to appear. In 1976 Warnos hitchhiked to Florida where she met 69-year-old Yacht Club president Louis Gratz Fell. They married that same year, and the announcement of their nuptials was printed in the local newspaper's society pages. However, Warnos continually involved herself in confrontations at the local bar and eventually went to jail for assault. She also hit Fell with his own cane leading him to get a restraining order against her. She returned to Michigan where on July 14, 1976, she was arrested in Antrim County and charged with assault and disturbing the peace for throwing a cue ball at a bartender's head. On July 17, her brother Keith died of esophageal cancer and Warnos received $10,000 from his life insurance. Warnos and Fell annulled their marriage on July 21 after only nine weeks. In August 1976, Warnos was given a $105 fine for drunk driving. She used Keith's inheritance money to pay the fine, and spent the rest within two months by using it to buy luxuries including a new car, which she wrecked shortly afterwards. On May 20, 1981 Warnos was arrested in Edgewater, Florida, 
for the armed robbery of a convenience store where she stole $35 and two packs of cigarettes. She was sentenced to prison on May 4, 1982 and released on June 30, 1983. On May 1, 1984, Warnos was arrested for attempting to pass forged checks at a bank in Key West. On November 30, 1985 she was named as a suspect in the theft of a revolver and ammunition in Pasco County. On January 4, 1986 Warnos was arrested in Miami and charged with car theft resisting arrest and obstruction of justice for providing identification bearing her aunt's name. Miami police officers found a .38 caliber revolver and a box of ammunition in the stolen car. On June 2, 1986, Volusia County deputy sheriffs detained Warnos for questioning after a male companion accused her of pulling a gun in his car and demanding $200. Warnos was found to be carrying spare ammunition, and police discovered a .22 pistol under the passenger seat she had occupied. Around this time, Warnos met Tyria Moore, a hotel maid at a Daytona Beach gay bar. They moved in together, and Warnos supported them with her earnings as a sex worker. On July 4, 1987, Daytona Beach police detained Warnos and Moore at a bar for questioning regarding an incident in which they were accused of assault and battery with a beer bottle. On March 12, 1988, Warnos accused a Daytona Beach bus driver of assault. She claimed that he pushed her off the bus following a confrontation. Moore was listed as a witness to the incident. Up until her execution, Warnos claimed to still be in love with Moore apprehension and sentencing. On July 4, 1990 Warnos and Moore abandoned Seam's car after they were involved in an accident. Witnesses who had seen the women driving the victims' cars provided police with their names and descriptions resulting in a media campaign to locate them. Police also found some of the victims' belongings in pawn shops and retrieved fingerprints matching those found in the victim's cars. Warnos had a criminal record in Florida and her fingerprints were on file. On January 9, 1991, Warnos was arrested on an outstanding warrant at the last resort a biker bar in Volusia County. Police located more the next day in Scranton, Pennsylvania. She agreed to elicit a confession from Warnos in exchange for immunity from prosecution. Moore returned with the police to Florida, where she was put up in a motel. Under police guidance, she made numerous telephone calls to Warnos pleading for help in clearing her name. Three days later on January 16, 1991, Warnos confessed to the murders. She claimed the men had tried to rape her, and she killed them in self-defense. A year later, on January 14, 1992, Warnos went to trial for the murder of Mallory. Although previous convictions are normally inadmissible in criminal trials, under Florida's Williams rule, the prosecution was allowed to introduce evidence related to her other crimes to show a pattern of illegal activity. On January 27, 1992, Warnos was convicted of Mallory's murder with help from Moore's testimony. At her sentencing, psychiatrists for the defense testified that Warnos was mentally unstable and had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. Four days later, she was sentenced to death. On March 31, 1992 Warnos pleaded no contest to the murders of Humphreys, Burris and Spears saying she wanted to get right with God. In her statement to the court she said in part, I wanted to confess to you that Richard Mallory did violently rape me as I've told you, but these others did not. They only began to start to on May 15, 1992, Warnos was given three more death sentences. In June 1992, Warnos pleaded guilty to the murder of Cascaden. In November 1992, 
She received her fifth death sentence. The defense made efforts during the trial to introduce evidence that Mallory had been tried for intent to commit rape in Maryland, and that he had been committed to a maximum security correctional facility that provided remediation to sexual offenders. Records obtained from that institution reflected that from 1958 to 1962 Mallory was committed for treatment and observation resulting from a criminal charge of assault with intent to rape, and received an overall eight years of treatment from the facility. In 1961, it was observed of Mr. Mallory that he possessed strong sociopathic trends. The judge refused to allow this to be admitted in court as evidence and denied Wu Onos' request for a retrial. In February 1993 Wuornos pleaded guilty to the murder of Antonio and was sentenced to death again. No charges were brought against her for the murder of Seems as his body was never found. In all, she received six death sentences. Wuornos told several inconsistent stories about the killings. She claimed initially that all seven men had raped her while she was working as a prostitute but later recounted the claim of self-defense citing robbery and a desire to leave no witnesses as the reason for murder. During an interview with filmmaker Nick Broomfield, when she thought the cameras were off she told him that it was in fact self-defense, but she could not stand being on death row, where she had been for ten years at that point, and wanted to die. Assessed using the psychopathy checklist Warnos scored 32 fortieths. The checklist evaluates individuals on a 20-item list of antisocial and interpersonal behaviors, with each item being scored at 0, 1 or 2 and thus a maximum score of 40. Depending on location and research perspective scores above 25 or 30 are consistent with a diagnosis of psychopathy. Execution Warnos was incarcerated at the Florida Department of Corrections Broward Correctional Institution Death Row for Women, then transferred to the Florida State Prison for execution. Her appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court was denied in 1996. In a 2001 petition to the Florida Supreme Court, she stated her intention to dismiss her legal counsel and terminate all pending appeals. I killed those men, she wrote, robbed them as cold as ice. And I'd do it again too. There's no chance in keeping me alive or anything because I'd kill again. I have hate crawling through my system. I am so sick of hearing this shes crazy stuff. I've been evaluated so many times. I'm competent sane and I'm trying to tell the truth. I'm one who seriously hates human life and would kill again. While her attorneys argued that she was not mentally competent to make such a request, Warnos insisted that she knew what she was doing, and a court-appointed panel of psychiatrists agreed. In 2002, Warnos began accusing prison matrons of tainting her food with dirt, saliva and urine. She said she had overheard conversations among prison personnel trying to get me so pushed over the brink by them I'd wind up committing suicide before the execution and wishing to rape me before execution. She also complained of strip searches, tight handcuffing, door kicking, frequent window checks, low water pressure, mildew on her mattress and cat calling, in distaste, and a pure hatred towards me. Warnos threatened to boycott showers and food trays when certain officers were on duty. In the meantime my stomach's growling away, and I'm taking showers through the sink of my cell. Her attorney stated that Ms. Warnos really just wants to have proper treatment, humane treatment until the day S.H.E.S. executed. He added she believes what S.H.E.S. written in the weeks before her execution. Warnos gave a series of interviews to Broomfield. She depicts being taken away to meet God and Jesus and the angels and whatever is beyond the beyond. 
In her final interview, she once again charged that her mind was tortured at BCI and her head crushed by sonic pressure. Food poisonings and other abuses worsened, she said each time she complained, with the goal of making her appear insane or to drive her insane. She also turned on her interviewer, You sabotaged my ass. Society and the cops and the system. A raped woman got executed and was used for books and movies and shit. Her final on-camera words were, Thanks a lot, society, for railroading my ass. Dawn Botkins, a childhood friend of Warnos, later told Broomfield that her verbal abuse was directed at society and the media in general, not at him specifically. Wu Onos' execution took place on October 9, 2002. She died at 9.47 a.m. EDT. She declined her last meal which could have been anything under $20 and opted for a cup of coffee instead. Her last words were, Yes, I would just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus. June the 6th, like the movie. Big Mothership and all will be back, he'll be back. She was the tenth woman in the United States, and the second in Florida to be executed. Since the 1976 Supreme Court decision restoring capital punishment after death, Juanos' body was cremated and her ashes were spread beneath a tree in her native Michigan. By Botkins, Warnos requested that Natalie Merchant's song Carnival be played at her funeral. Merchant commented on this when asked why she permitted Carnival to be played. During the credits of the documentary Aileen, Life, and Death of a Serial Killer, Broomfield later speculated on Warnos' motive and state of mind. Documentaries Filmmaker Nick Broomfield directed two documentaries about Warnos. Warnos was the subject of episodes of the documentary TV series American Justice Biography and Deadly Women. She was also featured in an episode of the TV series The New Detectives. Film The TV movie Overkill, the Aileen Warnos story starred Jean Smart as Aileen. The theatrical film Monster starred Charlize Theron as Warnos. It chronicles Wu Onos' story, from childhood until her first murder conviction. The film earned Theron an Academy Award, for Best Actress for playing Warnos. Other Media An operatic adaptation of Wu Onos' life premiered at San Francisco's Yerba Buena Center for the Arts on June 22, 2001. Entitled Warnos, the opera was written by composer, librettist Carla Lucero, conducted by Mary Chun and produced by the John Sim Center for the Performing Arts. Several musicians have written songs about Warnos, including Jewel and the New York-based metalcore band It Dies Today. The poet Doran Braunstein dedicated a poem to her called Aileen Warnos that appears in his 2011 spoken word CD The Obsessive Poet. The singer Diamanda Gales recorded a live cover of the Phil Ox song Iron Lady, which she would often perform as a tribute to Warnos for her performance album Malediction and Prayer. A song by Dolly's Circus named Aileen's Song was written and published in 2012. The poem Sugar Zero by Rima Banerjee is dedicated to Warnos, and appears in the 2005 Arsenal Pulp Press publication Red Light, Superheroes, Saints and Sluts. Lily Rabe portrayed a fictionalized version of Warnos as part of a Halloween storyline in American Horror Story, Hotel in the fourth episode of the show's fifth season, and later in the season finale, Psychopathology Model Wu Onus crimes have been closely related to the psychopathology model of women who kill, and has been related to having a psychopathic personality. Using the psychopathy checklist, Warnos was evidenced to have a psychopathic personality with a PCLR score of 32, 
with the cutoff score for psychopathy being at 30 in the United States. Warnos was also known to meet the proper criteria for possessing both borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. Much of Wu Onos' childhood and early career in prostitution are said to have damaged her irrevocably, and it could be seen that traumatic experiences throughout most of her young life could play a part in Wu Onos' psychological state including her departure from her biological mother as well as her grandmother ignoring the abuse she endured from her grandfather thus leading to the lack of development of a mother-daughter bond for Warnos as a young girl. The damage was then made worse as both Warnos and her brother believed that their grandparents were their actual parents but at age 11 learned this was not the case which furthered the relationship between Warnos and her adoptive parents. Warnos was also known to have early behavioral problems such as having an explosive temper which limited her ability to make friends as well as making it increasingly harder to maintain relationships. All this including her traumatic upbringing and physical as well as sexual abuse which was inflicted upon her have been partially linked to her development of a borderline personality disorder. Such severe trauma can also interrupt the structuralization of a mind at a developmental point, and result in primitive dissociative and splitting defenses, to ward off the intensity of emotional and sexual stimulation that cannot be integrated as a child. Brought to you by Wikivd.com would you like to know more?